Welcome back to our show, Human Humane Architecture, here on early uh, Tuesday evenings here in the wonderful uh, downtown Honolulu. So today our show will uh, be called Honolulu's International Marketplace, SIS. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right, because there are two. Yes, and our guest is DeSoto Brown. How do you do? How do you do out there? At the Bishop Museum. Yes, I am. Thank you for being here. This is awesome. I look very much forward to the show, and I'm going to keep it short and sweet as far as my part of it. But okay. my little introduction would be then when you will take the audience along on your amazing narrative. Okay. Um, I want them to maybe have in the back of your mind um, something that has to do with the show's name, which is yeah. humane. Right. And one of the definitions of humane is tolerant. Mm -hmm. And tolerant, we can say, has something to do with a very sort of common term, is, is, is inclusive. True. So I want the audience to please think about um, the inclusiveness of um, the first or the other one. And right. then, uh, because some people say in our uh, host uh, partner and colleague, Kelly Akina, always reminds me that he thinks that his culture has always been uh, inclusive from mm -hmm. the very beginning. And I think that's true. So hopefully we get uh, some five minutes to do our little bit of reflectiveness mm -hmm. on what we've mm -hmm. seen. But please mm -hmm. now, uh, take us on your super okay. exciting walk. All right. Episode. Well, I wanted to also just acknowledge that you and I have had s quite some discussions about this uh, leading up to just this little short, short description that we're going to do. And I want us to not only look at then and now, mm -hmm. but I also want us to have discussions as to what we think these mean, what works, what doesn't work, etc. Mm -hmm. Because that's mm -hmm. the point of this. Yeah. It's not just yeah. historic. But, but it won't be like what in these days is so popular is a populist approach on things. So I, yeah. I appreciate it's going to be a very scholarly one, but it's going to be a scholarly <laughs> one that takes a position as well. Okay. So All please, right. okay. get it All started. Right. Well, um, let's see. Why don't we go to our first slide? There we go. This is a picture of the international marketplace when it first opened, which was in 1956. And you'll notice that it is very open it pretty much at that point consisted of buildings just along the perimeter of the sides of the lot and it did not have a large overhead sign it's only got a little small sign which is um, kind of a handcrafted sign mm -hmm. on the right hand side and uh, it's got these sort of exotica tiki like uh, adornments which are in the center and prominently visible now one of the reasons that uh, the marketplace developed with the concept that it did, with the appearance that it did, was due to a specific person named Don the Beachcomber. So let's go to our next slide and we will see what Don the Beachcomber did. This is a really good, I think, depiction of the tiki fad, the exotica fad, mm -hmm. which was not just confined to certainly the Hawaiian Islands or the United States because mm -hmm. it was international. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that uh, I sent uh, Martin some YouTube clips of German depictions of Hawaiian culture mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Hawaiian exotica, et cetera, from uh, far away on the other side of the planet. So you caught us. I, I did, mm -hmm. I did. So I like to say that um, this, this whole exotica thing was something that was international. But if we can go back to the Don the Beachcomber slide, I want to talk about him a little bit. Don the Beachcomber was one of the two instigators of this whole exotica thing, this whole tiki thing. Uh, he and his main competitor was a man named Trader Vic. They both got started on the West Coast in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. They both ended up doing a similar thing, which was restaurant and bar that had this exotic adornments it was meant to be kind of a fantasy amalgamation of things from different cultures, mainly in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be as though they were a trading post in which people were coming and going and bringing things from different lands. Mm -hmm. And they developed these uh, exotic drinks. That was one of the main things that they also mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. was the tropical cocktails, mm -hmm. which we saw in the previous picture. Mm -hmm. So Don the Beachcomber, having come here in 1947, built two structures and the site of what is now the marketplace. And one of them was a restaurant and bar, and the bar was called the Dagger Bar. Mm -hmm. And there was also a gift shop. Mm -hmm. And both of those structures were meant to look like big thatched 
sort of Pacific fantasy mm -hmm. ideals. Mm -hmm. And they had palm trees and other tropical plants all around them. And um, there actually were, in some cases, palm trees growing through mm -hmm. where the structure was yeah. built. Mm -hmm. So here's Don the Beachcomber in this site, in a really prominent place in Waikiki, where lots of people are coming and going. He's built up a very successful business. And he's also, at that point, helped popularize the concept internationally because at this point in the 50s we've got these exotic bars etc in different mm -hmm. places in the world um, so the next step up is let's make this even bigger mm -hmm. and so a shopping the idea was let's create a shopping area mm -hmm. on this site which was all the Queen Emma Trust which is relevant to the whole discussion as well in a way and he informed and helped guide what the international marketplace came, became based on how he had created his earlier business. Mm -hmm. So let me just consult. Okay, so if we can go back to the, the third slide. And uh, there's Don the Beachcomber again. So when the international marketplace was constructed, this was the Don the Beachcomber look. And as you can see, it's also the main other buildings at the time were built to mimic that too. And as you said, Pete Wimberly was the main architect mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. um, I want to emphasize too that uh, the international marketplace was always not a real thing. Mm -hmm. It was like a little bit of Disneyland. Mm -hmm. It was a little recreated fantasy mm -hmm. of Polynesia or an exotic land. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for people to look back and say nostalgically, oh, it was so real and it was so authentic. It never was. It was always a fun place mm -hmm. that was a fantasy. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go to the next slide and we will see a picture of the international marketplace as it appeared in the early 1960s. So the difference here is now it's got a big sign over the front to make it very clear to you, this is called the international marketplace, mm -hmm. come on in. You see the banyan tree is very visible there, and it's got these two main sort of longhouse type buildings mm -hmm. that are fronting onto Kalakaua Avenue that are the first thing that you see. And also there are those exotic adornments or sort of decorative pieces there that are based on some Pacific cultural things, but they're not really real. Now, let's go to the next slide and see what does it look like today? There it is today. So, what have we got? We now have a place where there are elements of the original structure in that there's a sign over the front, mm -hmm. and so you can see where to walk in. There are some palm trees, but what we now have is a much bigger, more monolithic structure, mm -hmm. and the main thing that's different is that tree is now not that visible. Mm -hmm. The tree is really encased in and surrounded by the structure. Mm -hmm. So what had been the focal point that you saw from the street mm -hmm. is now still there, still in the same place, mm -hmm. but it's not treated the same way at all. Mm -hmm. This is much more of a kind of business-like approach. In other words, this is a big building. You can come in, mm -hmm. but it's a big building. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's see what we have next. Let's go next to the next slide. and. Here's the way the banyan tree looks today. This is a photo that you took. Mm -hmm. And what we see is it's still there, but look at the building all around it. And this is going to be something that is going to have to be dealt with on the part of them, the, the, mm -hmm. the maintenance of this tree. It's going to be very important. Because the tree is so closely surrounded by the building, this is, as we were talking earlier, an ever-growing organic thing. Mm -hmm. It is not a static sculpture that's just mm -hmm. going to sit there. The tree is always going to have to be trimmed because mm -hmm. the building is so close to it. Banyan trees also are these big wonderful things, but they drop mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of stuff. Mm -hmm. There are leaves falling off all the time. There are berries falling off all the time. We're seeing this building right now nice and fresh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're gonna have to be keeping that up mm -hmm. very importantly. And that's one of the problems the old international marketplace yeah. had. Yeah, yeah, the upkeeping. Although due to the concept of being more rugged, more natural, it probably wasn't so much obvious. That's exactly right. right. That's exactly right. Because there was a lot more open mm -hmm, space around mm -hmm, it and mm -hmm. it wasn't as as sort clean. of clean and yeah, swept yeah. and mm -hmm. and uh, nice and neat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, 
we'll, we'll see how that develops. Okay, next picture. Let's see our next photograph. There is the International Marketplace Treehouse as mm -hmm. it appeared in 1960. The treehouse, now first of all, as you can see, the tree's considerably smaller. Mm -hmm. So building something in it was a lot easier to do. Mm -hmm. um, the treehouse, there were, there were actually different structures in there over a time period that mm -hmm. kind of came and went. Mm -hmm. um, it could not have existed, because that tree is ever growing and ever moving, mm -hmm. The treehouse could never have stayed there the entire mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it has been gone for a long time. Now, the treehouse was used for different things. When it was first built, you could have a, it, it was used as a little romantic getaway dinner spot for two. Mm -hmm. And you could order, you could say, okay, now I'm going to, I want my dinner there. You went in for several hours mm -hmm. and you were left alone mm -hmm. with your food. Mm -hmm. And you with got- a partner with More whoever important. you wanted mm -hmm. to be in there with. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was Great. a very romantic place. Yeah. Exotically um, romantic. Exotically romantic, and here we are in the banyan tree and mm -hmm. all by ourselves, and we have a fine dinner yeah. with lots of alcohol, yeah. with nice alcohol, mm -hmm. to keep us going through this wonderful experience. So uh, after that, it got turned into a radio station mm -hmm. studio, and it was mm -hmm. used by a succession mm -hmm. of different radio personalities mm -hmm. and different radio stations. Mm -hmm. And of course, once you're on the air, you're able to say, and we're broadcasting from the treehouse mm -hmm. in the international mm -hmm. marketplace. So the place itself gets promotion. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's this wonderful exotic. I mean, how many other radio stations in the USA are being broadcast from a tree? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a great deal for whatever radio yeah, station yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's um, see how it looks today. Let's see how it looks today. Let's look at that. Okay. This is the treehouse as it appears today. The treehouse is no longer truly a treehouse. It is a separate structure built among the branches or the structure of the mm -hmm, tree. Mm -hmm. And it has no longer got any sort of uh, function. Mm -hmm. It purely is a little diversion for people to walk into. And then within it are some small historic mm -hmm, displays. Mm -hmm. Now, I think it is really fun. I mean, and of course, again, this is a unique thing for everybody mm -hmm. to want to walk into and look at. Mm -hmm. Does it have the same organic rationale as the previous one did. No, it does mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. And again, because the tree is ever growing, it makes sense to, if you're trying to make mm -hmm. this permanent, mm -hmm. not actually attach mm -hmm. it to the tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And if a very critical take on that would be it's a tombstone of the old. And it, it is. It's a memorial. It's, it's, it's a memorial. It's just replicating or keeping right. the memory alive without right. having sort of an, uh, an evolved function. Exactly. That, could, that is know, exactly right. To the past one. That's exactly right. We, I didn't tell you up front, but I tell you now, there's, we need to take a break, which we have to do now. It's right. only a minute, and then right. we got to go on and obviously speed up. So okay. keep that thought, and All right. we'll be back in a All minute. Right. All right. All right. Aloha, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm the host of Business in Hawaii, and we're a show about positive stories of business in Hawaii, both the companies and the individuals. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock on thinktechhawaii.com, uh, and we can also be found on Olelo uh, during normal scheduling. Uh, please join us so we can share with you some of the experience and insight to having a successful business or career here in Hawaii. Aloha. Hi, I'm Crystal. Welcome to Think Tech. My show, Quok Talk, normally airs at 10 o'clock on Tuesdays, but it's going to change to 11 o'clock. So don't miss it. It's an hour later. You can sleep in a little longer. Come with me and engage in some sensitive, provocative discussions on everything. It's all good, all right? Women's issues, things that people don't dare talk about, we want it on the table. So join me. Welcome back to Humane Architecture here today with the Soto Brown and talking about Honolulu's international marketplaces. All right. Well, let's go to our next slide, slide number nine. And uh, there are a few things in the marketplace today which I think are sort of referential to what used to be there before. Mm -hmm. Here's a picture of what was at the base of the tree originally in the late 1950s. And if you look on the right-hand side, you'll see that there's a big open space too. That's when that space existed. If we go to our next slide, we will see that today there still is, I think, a little hint of that. There's mm -hmm. a fountain, and as you can see, people can walk around in it and play in it. Mm -hmm. um, is that directly a reference to that previous one? I don't know. I sort mm -hmm. of suspect that the architects and the planners mm -hmm. did make reference to what had been mm -hmm. there before. Next, we've got um, something that is still there today, but back in the old days, 
one of the big attractions was there were free Polynesian shows, mm -hmm. meaning that you could come in without paying mm -hmm. and watch a show. Mm -hmm. So this is a picture from the early 1960s of some of those performers on an outdoor stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we go to our next picture, they're still doing that today mm -hmm. because you've seen that, you took that picture, mm -hmm. and we know that they're carrying on the tradition. And on one hand, it's nice that they're doing it for free. On the other hand, the importance of it is to get people in there because mm -hmm. they're customers. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. not purely altruistic. Mm -hmm. um, now as I consult, okay, let's talk about the shopping experience mm -hmm. because that's very different. Mm -hmm. Uh, our next uh, picture, this is Diamond Head Sportswear as it appeared in right about probably the late 50s, not too long after this place opened. You will see that this is an unair conditioned open space. Mm -hmm. Okay, we talked about, you know, energy saving and so forth. There was very little, th there was probably no air conditioning at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. And nobody expected there to be air conditioning. So nobody walked in and said, it's so hot, I don't want to buy anything. And it was part of the experience. It was right? part of the experience. Even the expectation of being exactly. uh, tropical exactly. and being fantastic. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So if you look at this, you'll see they don't even have, they've got these bamboo sort of grids that mm -hmm. they can lower to mm -hmm. sort of cut, you know, close off the front, mm -hmm. but that's all there is. Mm -hmm. Okay, well now, in our next slide, let's see what, there's the shopping experience today. Mm -hmm. And there still are some mannequins there as there were before, but this is Saks. This is the Saks Fifth Avenue store mm -hmm. on the first floor. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that this store is called Saks Fifth Avenue mm -hmm. takes us totally away from Diamond Head Sportswear. We're referencing New York we're referencing chic, we're referencing fashion, mm -hmm. we're not referencing tropical mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a total difference between those two international marketplaces. Uh, next, let's look at a map of what, here's a, here's a little bit of a map of probably what things look like in the early 1960s. And you can see that there are a lot of disparate structures there and there mm -hmm. are different st architectural styles. Mm -hmm. But you also see there's a lot of open space. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really made a huge difference in the international marketplace by the 1970s was all that open space got filled in. Mm -hmm. And as they pushed more and more buildings in because mm -hmm. the value of the land increased, because the taxes increased, et cetera, you had a totally different situation. Mm -hmm. You had a very difficult way to get around. It mm -hmm. was not mm -hmm. the place it had mm -hmm. been before. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide. The international marketplace today is multi-level. The way it was before was very much ground level. Mm -hmm. And as buildings got built and they got a little bit higher, it was difficult to get people up to the second mm -hmm. floor. Mm -hmm. The way it is today, you've got much more of a big structure, as I said, different floors, different experiences. Mm -hmm. As to how that will translate into business is another thing which they will have to deal mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, oh, I know, our next picture, there we go. Um, there are holes <laughs> in this structure for trees to grow through. Mm -hmm. That is sort of a playful touch, which I like, mm -hmm. but it's also, interestingly, something that was developed in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. And these types of structural holes for palm trees to go through were common in Waikiki in the 50s and 60s. They also were part of Ala Moana Center when it first opened mm -hmm. in 1959. Mm -hmm. Which might be another show. A lot Which of is, we will talk about Ala Moana and the Ala Moana building later on. Mm -hmm. uh, our la our close to the end of our slides, our next slide is going to show us, here's the top deck. So there are three levels of this structure now. It's quite a bit, it's, it's very much different in feeling. One thing I think is interesting there is, you'll notice that it's not all straight. Mm -hmm. The path that you follow within the structure is very meandering and mm -hmm. it is not just this rectangular, I mean of course the, the confines of the lot are rectangular, mm -hmm. but you as a pedestrian walk through on a curving path. Mm -hmm. Is that in reference to something else? I am not absolutely sure. I think it's appealing, I think mm -hmm. it's nice, mm -hmm. but um, why they did it that way, I'm not sure, and I don't want to take a guess on that. Mm -hmm. uh, our last, our second to last slide shows us something that I think is, is an improvement, and that is that 
the entire lot, the entire space is occupied by this one structure now. Mm -hmm. So we have an entranceway on Kalakaua Avenue, which I showed earlier, mm -hmm. and now there's this one, which is on Kuhio Avenue. Mm -hmm. So there is a coherence to the whole thing, which I think improves it. There are similar facades on either end, mm -hmm. and you as a person who walks in have a much better sense of mm -hmm. where you're going to. I think that helps mm -hmm. their entire identity. Mm -hmm. Finally, our last slide. This is really good. This is really good. This is from the film Blue Hawaii from 1961. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Pardon me, which of course is an Elvis film. Mm -hmm. And in this film, Elvis's girlfriend, Miley Duvall, mm -hmm. works supposedly at a travel agency. And there is Miley herself, played by Joan Blackman, mm -hmm. sitting at her desk at her travel agency job. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And in the background is the actual international marketplace. They set up a camera on Kalakaua Avenue. They shot this backdrop. They built the set in Hollywood, and they pretended that you were on Kalakaua mm -hmm. Avenue looking across the street to the international marketplace. So millions of people saw that when they saw Blue Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. That's kind of our just then and now history. Yeah. Let's talk about some other stuff. And also, since you nicely give different uh, credits to the pictures, I took that last one from my very own German copy <laughs> of Blue Hawaii, and you just shared with me the many different movie posters of that, of that movie. <laughs> That's right. And the image, so it's called Blaues Hawaii, it's the original sort of German version of it. And I, th I think we have a couple minutes left here, seven minutes left, and I, I think it's already clear we won't come to a conclusion, maybe there is no such thing. Correct. But I think if this is good for something, it's a question of where are we as a society, maybe what does evolution have mm -hmm. to do with society, are we evolving, are mm -hmm. we getting more civilized, or are we getting more decivilized? and that obviously depends on the point of view and the position. Absolutely. And what we want to provide is, I think, critical food for thought here, I'm just going to throw something in that mm -hmm. relates to my mm -hmm. uh, sort of hint at the very beginning. If we talk about authenticity, uh, that itself is a tricky kind of beast. You already said, you know, it was maybe perceived, you know, as something that had to do with indigenous, which it wasn't. So it was already very nostalgic to begin with. Mm -hmm. And now people being nostalgic about it, you know, just continues that kind of story. Right. But if we, if we reference to this one picture with the Polynesian Shoal, for example, right? you said you were still around buildings that, first of all, try to reference the indigenous way of building. And they, in fact, utilized the way they were working as natural ventilation, right. as shading, as actually right. local materials, right. more or less, or more than less. Today, and there's also an interesting Civil Beat article from recently that we also sort of looked at, and there's one, art, there's one uh, point in there where the author basically, I think, uh, quotes a visitor, and they talk about the AstroTurf. Mm -hmm. They're saying there's actually AstroTurf in there, and they're thinking, the mom says, maybe this is a good thing then because my kid doesn't get all dirty. I think that itself, from a sociological point of view, I think the original one was a gritty, was a dirty. Absolutely. And in many levels, also in, in levels of inclusiveness, because little people with little businesses could do business, and little people with little money could buy little things that mm -hmm. some were probably even made here, others weren't, and when you know uh, globalization increased, obviously decreasingly. But also people could, could buy something, you know, very, very cheap. And, and all these things are basically right. not apparent anymore, right? Correct. Is that fair to say? No, that's absolutely right. And we discussed earlier, before we go around the show, about just the changes that uh, have, have occurred because of technology, because of travel, because of politics. The retailing scene in Honolulu and in Waikiki has altered dramatically from mm -hmm. what it was in 1956. Mm -hmm. In 1956, the primary people coming here were American tourists. Mm -hmm. They didn't want a Saks Fifth Avenue mm -hmm. because they had that at home. Mm -hmm. What they wanted were exotic things that they couldn't get at home. Mm -hmm. We are now in a situation where a good chunk of our tourists are Asian. Mm -hmm. They are buying, because that's the trend that they have, high-end designer goods. Mm -hmm. That's what they want to buy when they come mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So. Ala Moana Center and the International Marketplace and, and Waikiki in general have changed to accommodate that mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they now have the funds to do it, they politically are able to travel, mm -hmm. and that's what they're looking mm -hmm. for. So that's what mm -hmm. the customers want and that's what they're getting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So we, we can probably say it evolved along the lines of capitalism, most Absolutely. likely, because we're actually Absolutely. run by everything post-occupancy has increasingly been mm -hmm. commercialized, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and when we, but when we look at things like AstroTurf, you know, we look at the indigenous, they, not because they, great discussion we had before was like, they didn't really have the strategy of being sustainable, how we call this today. Correct. They just had to be because that's all the chance that's they right. had. Because that's they right. were isolated, all they had was stuff that was around, so right. they worked with all that. Right. But we actually, there is a brochure, the, the big sort of guide brochure with all the shops is called The Story to be Continued. That's the official branding actually of the uh, enterprise. Uh, okay. So I'm allowing myself to make this critical pitch in seeing their AstroTurf. If we think about AstroTurf, AstroTurf is actually a petroleum based right. material, right? It uses crude oil that we know isn't helping the environment. Also, the shops are all air conditioned. Mm -hmm. So the question is, would sort of the indigenous people have done that? No. Maybe not. No. So then no. maybe rather than saying that and tracing it back, it would be honest to say we have evolved, we have evolved, but that's maybe not so appealing, right? That's not so, so selling. That's true. But again, when you talk about, uh, I mean, one of the things I like to say is the expectations are there. Mm -hmm. We do not, we expect air conditioning. People mm -hmm. expect air conditioning. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it and you walk in and it's uncomfortably warm, you might walk out. Mm -hmm. In 1956, they didn't have that expectation. They just accepted what was going on and said, this is okay. Plus, it looks kind of interesting. So our exotic slash exotic our attitude is gone, and absolutely. so are the spaces that cater to absolutely. that. Absolutely, right? absolutely. As exciting as this is, we unfortunately we knew this coming. We run out of time. That's right. Thirty minutes is horrible for both just, of us. No, no, it didn't. It didn't work. But it, it, it worked, worked. But it, it was. It, it was. We could have talked a lot but longer. But what it does is have you come back That's actually fine. multiple times. That's so fine. That's fine. That's fine. Sort of agreed. And That's we fine. We already have a couple of projects. Mm -hmm. So I look so much forward to that. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. I You're think welcome. This is awesome, and I think this is very important for people to start thinking about so. cultures and I their own, so. where they are, and their position. I hope so. So thank you so much. For thank that. you, and um, I also just want to put in a plug. Every Thursday on uh, Facebook, I do something called Throwback Thursday from Bishop Museum, and if you liked this kind of little historical presentation, I do them every week on different subjects, sort of in a similar way. So you can watch me there too. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Please do that. And you guys also please be back on Tuesday early evenings for Humane Architecture. Next time, a very special guest who um, I know you know as well. This is whom I call a most um, investigative reporter of our current days, and that's Kurt Sandberg. Oh, yeah. Who's back on the yeah. island and he's on the show. So Excellent. Excellent. He'll have lots to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. So see you then. Bye-bye.